this is IGCSE 0460 where we look at geography for Cambridge. Uh, today we are going to continue with our topic development and in this segment we are going to look at two things human development index HDI and inequalities between countries. In the previous lesson we looked at indicators of development uh, like national income or wealth life expectancy, literacy, and infant mortality rate, where a country's level of development is based on one of these indicators. Uh, but we know that development often takes place in an even way. Uh, for example, a country may have a very high GDP, probably derived from exploitation of rich oil reserves, while a segment of the population live in poverty and lack access to basic education and health care or even decent housing. It is for this reason, therefore, that the United Nations Development Program, or UNDP, came up with a composite measure for development known as the Human Development Index, or HDI, which compares level of development between countries based on three indicators. But before we look at the three indicators, we need to understand the meaning of the word composite. Composite means combined together. In this case, different indicators are combined together to get one round figure, which is the HDI figure. So the indicators are life expectancy which basically means the number of years uh, a newborn baby is expected to live. And number two is gross national product, which is GNP. And uh, we have the third one, which is education or literacy. And this looks at two things. Number one is average years of schooling for adults aged 25 years. And secondly, we have expected years of schooling for children of school going age. Uh, so let's look at how HDI works. The actual figures for each indicator are converted into an index of between 0 and 1. And, uh, each indice, and uh, the indices for each indicator are then added and averaged to get the HDI value, which always is less than one the higher the hdi value the higher is the level of development and vice versa so this means that a country that has the least hdi figure is considered to be the least developed of all countries and then uh, we will say that the hdi is a very useful and a fairer measure of development because it includes economic indicator which is GNP per person and social indicators and uh, these are life expectancy and literacy. So what this means is that when a certain country has been ranked as the most developed under HDI, it means that it is, the, it is better than the rest in all the three aspects. Uh, that is uh, life expectancy, literacy, and education. Unlike the previous measures where a country may have high GNP per capita but with low life expectancy, so HDI is much better. So here we are going to look at a choropleth map showing levels of development of countries based on the HDI for 2017. Uh, of course, with the corporate map, the different colors uh, show uh, different value. Uh, in this case, we have a key that shows number one up to ten, uh, which shows countries that are the most developed. Norway is number one with uh, an HDI figure of 0 0.95, while Netherlands is number ten with an HDI figure of 0 0.93. So these are the most developed countries. And on this side, we have the least 10 developed countries. And Niger is uh, number 189, which is 0 0.35. This is the least country uh, in terms of development. So according to 
the UN, there are four stages of development in which different countries belong. So uh, these stages are shown here. Number one stage is least developed countries. And then in number two, we have developing countries. And in number three, newly industrialized countries or NIC, and then developed countries in stage four. So let's go ahead and look at the descriptions of each of these stages. So for least developed countries, they are the poorest of the developing countries with major institutional and human resource problems. They have low GNP per capita and low life expectancy. They also may have poor geographical conditions uh, such as low rainfall and uh, they are prone to natural hazards. Examples of such countries can be found on the African continent, in Asia and in South America. Developing countries, on the other hand, they have attained development just beyond LDCs and are on a path to becoming industrialized. They have strengthened some institutions and sectors such as agriculture and mining. Examples are Botswana, which is in Africa, Maldives and Samoa. So you may take a look at an atlas to locate some of these countries. Uh, in stage three, we have newly industrialized countries and these are countries that have undergone rapid and successful industrialization since 1960s. Examples here include South Korea, Singapore, Taiwan, and Hong Kong. And these together are known as the four Asian tigers. Other examples, we have Brazil, China, Malaysia, and India. In the last stage, which is developed countries, uh, these Countries have well-developed institutions and infrastructures with high GD GNP per capita and majority of the people are highly educated and are employed in the tertiary and the quaternary sectors. Life expectancy is also high and uh, some of the examples include Norway and Switzerland and if you remember well, these were among the top 10 countries in the HDI rank of 2017. So you may ask yourself a very important question that what causes inequalities in development between countries? So let's take a look at some of these causes. Uh, number one, we have natural hazards. Examples of course may include earthquakes, tsunamis, or volcanic eruptions, flooding are uh, mentioned, all the ones that you can think of. So all countries may be hit by hazards, but the difference lies in the ability to combat or even cope with the effects. The scope of preparedness for these hazards is also different between, H, uh, between LEDCs and MEDCs. Number next is discrimination. As some countries, for example, in LEDCs, have a discrimination against women, where women are not educated in the same way as men. And this has uh, held back the overall development compared to MEDCs, where women are educated and are part of the workforce. So this is a difference there. Uh, geographical location, uh, some countries are landlocked and... Uh, these are the poorest of the countries uh, compared to those that are close to the sea. Uh, we know that countries that are landlocked have no access to the sea and they find difficulties when it comes to trading with other countries. So they are held back in terms of development because of nature. Uh, another thing is demography and uh, here we basically look at the characteristics in the demography of the country. So countries where birth rates have fallen significantly have developed uh, much faster than where the birth rates are still high. From the previous map of the HDI rank of 2017, we saw Niger uh, as the least developed country with our HDI of uh, 0 
And uh, from statistics, they tell us that Niger has the highest birth rates in the whole world. So this should not come as a surprise why it is the poorest. Uh, next thing is the political climate. Uh, countries like Somalia, uh, Yemen, DRC, uh, which have been at war for a long time, are very poor compared to the countries like Switzerland, which have uh, never been at war with any country. So in this case, you find that the country is resorting much of the resources into buying ammunition and other things which will lag behind other development projects. Uh, point number next is balance of trade. Uh, we know that LEDCs normally export semi-finished goods and they end up earning very little from them. Uh, but at the same time, they all import very expensive finished goods uh, from the MEDCs and this has left the, these countries uh, behind on the path of development. Uh, another aspect we can look at is the political corruption. Very common in LEDCs, government officials are very corrupt and uh, they divert uh, money which is meant for the development projects of the country for their own uh, personal use. And this has hampered their development. And of course, we know that in MEDCs, corruption is very minimal. And while in some countries, it is unheard of. Uh, the other issue is climatic conditions. Uh, the poorest countries are those within the tropics uh, where temperatures are very hot and uh, land is less fertile. Also, water in these areas is scarce and the tropical diseases are very common. Some countries here, we could talk about Somalia and South Sudan. On the other hand, temperate countries are such as Canada, uh, Germany, USA, Switzerland, are actually very, very rich. And the last point that we can consider here is natural resources. Uh, we look at things like minerals, water resources, forest resources, among other things. So some of these resources uh, would act as uh, raw materials in the industries. So countries that have uh, more natural resources such as oil uh, would become more rich compared to other countries that do not have some of these resources because their industrialization would be held back in a way. So <clears throat> I'm going to give you an activity where I need you to research development indicators for two contrasting countries and produce country fact files in form of data tables and graphs of results. Go ahead and describe and offer explanations for the differences that exist in these two countries of your choice. So go to the internet and uh, look for whatever you can and come up with a write-up for this. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the effects of inequalities. If countries are at different levels of development, what are some of the problems that we might find? So number one, LEDCs borrow from MEDCs at high interest rates and they keep paying debts rather than uh, developing themselves. Uh, this is very common. Uh, countries borrow a lot of money and they have a very big debt burden which hampers their development. Over-dependence on MEDCs for finances and technology is uh, normally followed by unfair policies on LEDCs. So the MEDCs that give lending to the LEDCs uh, normally attach this assistance with uh, policies that may be unfair for continuous development of these poor countries. LEDCs cannot afford to import food or even invest in agricultural innovations, hence food shortage and starvation. And this can also result into uh, low life expectancy. Uh, the other issue is LEDCs are most vulnerable to uh, natural disasters because they can't afford to combat them or even cope with their effects. And last but not least, Children under five years die in LEDCs due to treatable illnesses such as malaria, 
while HIV is still a big problem. So because of the uh, lack of financial resources and uh, illiteracy and other things, you find that children are dying more in these poor countries. So as we conclude, there is uh, an exercise for you here. And uh, the reason I include these questions is to show you that these topics, that the information that you're studying here is very much examinable. So this is section C, remember, and this is question number five. Study figure eight, a map showing HDI, a measure of human development index. Always look at the key and uh, be able to answer questions that follow. Question number one. What do the initials HDI stand for? And we have seen what that is. Compare the HDI in Africa and North America. <clears throat> Roman 3, explain why HDI is a useful indicator of development. And lastly, Roman 4, uh, going for 4 marks, explain why there are inequalities in the level of development between countries so make a write-up for your answers and forward them so that i can see uh, how well you have done uh, thank you very much and we catch up in the third lesson of this topic development stay safe